Welcome to Travel Show Live with Steve Perillo. My guest this week is Allison Wellner, travel writer extraordinaire. Stay tuned for the show. From Studio 17H, this is Travel Show Live with Steve Perillo. Allison Wellner is here. She is a writer who is a lifelong, whose lifelong mission is to explore every corner of the globe. She grew up in Manhattan, and her overprotective mother once said, why do you need to travel? We have everything here. That's not a Jewish accent, but it's more of Italian. So Allison is, is working on answering the question, why travel, because everything's here. Her journeys takes her on eating and drinking binges, or <laughs> eating and drinking delights, and she uh, loves local history. She also is, is very interested in spiritual growth and five-star luxury. Right, Allison? Spiritual this growth and luxury. This is true. I see no contradiction between these things. <laughs> because? Because you need to be comfortable to meet your, your spiritual leaders. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I agree wholeheartedly, <laughs> believe me. Uh, we have a lot in common, a lot in common, and there are three things that we have in common. We're both heat seekers. Yes. And I'm going to tell you what a heat seeker is shortly. We both dislike weddings. Although married, I am. Although you're married, yes, and I would have way. said we could have gotten married because Except we uh, dislike and like the same things. But apparently, right. you had a wedding that you liked. Ship has sailed. And speaking of ships, <laughs> and you're a little critical of cruises. <laughs> speaking of ships, uh, the the kind of mass market cruises. I want to talk to you a little bit. Absolutely. About that, without putting anyone down. No, no, no. Uh, heat seeking means that you are seeking spicy foods, the ultimate spicy foods. The habanero pepper, the, what, what is the source of heat in, in cooking? Well, there's actually many different sources of heat in cooking, and they all act in slightly different ways, but most of us think of the chili pepper, um, and that's the kind of heat that really makes you feel like your mouth is on fire. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the, there's the mustards and the horseradish that act a little bit differently. Those make you feel like you're struck by lightning. And <laughs> what mustard makes you feel like you're struck by lightning? Yeah, it just works in a different way so that you, I mean, I'm sure you've had this experience where you've had some horseradish or wasabi um, or a hot mustard and it feels like it's kind of shooting up your nose. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, Almost yeah. like an ice cream. Uh, yeah. Freeze. It's probably what the electric chair is. What is wasabi? Like. Uh, where is that from? Uh, wasabi is, that is from is from Japan, and we actually don't get um, real wasabi here in the United mm -hmm. States. We mostly get horseradish that's colored green. <laughs> is that all it is? Yeah, that's Just all it is. Yeah, still okay, delicious. Okay, so you're a culinary travel writer, and you're seeking yeah. heat. So how do you yes. combine all well, of that? Where uh, do you go to find the heat? Well, you know, actually, um, in the story that you're referring to, which was on the Travel Channel's World Hum, I sort of did it as a side mission. You know. Oh, hold on. On Travel Channel, World Hum. Uh, Travel it? Channel. Um, the Travel Channel has a website called World Hum, and mm -hmm. I wrote a story for them, a five-part. You had to, you know, okay. tune in every single day for five days to get Good. the whole entire story. And now I'm just going to give it to you in the next two and a half seconds. Um, well, leave a little cliffhanger yeah. so they can well, if, go, yeah. go to the website. Yeah. Don't reveal yeah. all. Well, actually, if you've been paying attention, you've basically gotten the end of the story. But I'll just have to let you read it to try and to try and figure all right, it all out. Tell us about the heat. And but yeah, so it was sort of a side mission, I was going and researching other stories, and so wherever I was, I just decided that I would just try to find the spiciest food that I could get. And I was almost always disappointed, um, especially when I was traveling in places like China or India, they would just assume that as, you know, look at me, like I don't look like a tough gal, and they would just assume I really didn't know what I was wanting and what I was willing to get myself into. And so the food was never, was never quite hot enough, and I would always end up in these situations where I was, you know, begging kitchen staff to bring me hot hotter and hotter and hotter food. Bring it on. Bring it on. And so, you know, eventually I ended up in situations where I was getting whole, you know, chili Wait, peppers. Wait, Allison, can't you just eat more hot food, more hot sauce? You and that'll keep, make it hotter. Well, you can keep you can keep Quantity. pouring it. You can keep pouring it on. Yeah. But actually, there's something called um, the Scoville scale, um, and no that's way. what. Yeah, yeah. And what's it's the word? Scoville, um, and it was a pharmacist who developed it. Um, and basically, it measures measures heat, and it's very subjective. It's it's basically like it sounds very scientific, but it's actually um, basically like a focus group 
of people who sit around and go, mm, that's hot, mm, that's hotter, okay, that's on the scope. There's no way to empirically there. measure heat in food. Not really. There's no Not really. I mean, it's, it's pseudo-scientific. Let's say it's pseudo-scientific. Well, subjective. Yes, you ask subjective. people, is that hotter? Yeah, I mean, and you know, we all have different different receptors for heat, and you know, as you get older, you, you start to lose some taste buds, and so you can take things a little hotter. Of course, the compensating action is your stomach becomes less able to take it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of God's little joke. So but. as the ulcer comes on, you know you've had enough. Yes. All right. Yes. Where did you find the hot food in the in your travels? Well, um, I had a couple of good good experiences. Um, and, you know, in India, finally, I got some people to make me some food that they would eat themselves, and that was that was pretty hot. That was good tingle. Mm. Um, when I was in Honduras, I had um, a pepper off the off the tree, um, and I just had a very teeny little bit of it, right. um, and I uh, was really kind of careful with it, and I didn't have it from the very Tip, end which um, is because the, it's the, the membranes are what hold the heat. They used to say the, the, heat, the, the seeds were the hottest part. It's actually the, the membranes in between the seeds. Um, okay. I think it's like my, you know, protecting the seeds kind yeah. of, oh. kind of thing. Yeah. So, so that's why so, so I animals did that. won't eat the seeds. Yeah, because of you know they're being protected in this little membrane of pain. It doesn't pain. work with you though. Doesn't no, work nothing with you keeps at all. me away. And um, and so finally, well, this is the big the big ending. Um, I was in uh, Indianapolis of all places um, for the Indianapolis 500, mm. and there's this place called St. Elmo's Steakhouse, and it's been around forever. And they have uh, they make a shrimp cocktail, and it looks like a very innocent shrimp cocktail. I mean, just you know the little shrimp, pink, happy. What could be? dangerous about that. Well, it turns out they just get pounds and pounds and pounds of fresh, fresh horseradish in every single day and they have like wear the biohazard gear and they grind it fresh and they put that in the cocktail sauce. And so, and they actually, wow. there are firemen, firemen go there as a hazing ritual for the young, young yeah. firemen. They say, you know, just take a great big scoop of that. And so, you know, I kind of just, you know, dug right in thinking nothing to fear here in good old Indianapolis and, you know, bam, you know, I had that lightning. So you had the bam I had the band, the lightning, the or lightning the... this top of my skull coming off yeah, the whole nine the head yards. Exploding. Yeah, it was great. And <laughs> so, you know, it uh, so that was really what I was looking for. And so I sort of, you know, declared a halt to the official mission at that point and felt that I had, you know, I had replicated an experience that I was looking to have. Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis, hotter Indiana. Hotter than Honduras, hotter than India. Yeah, than and apparently Frankfurt. there's a big sign in the airport that says that I've said so. Um, Excuse me. I haven't seen it myself. Um, but I've been told that there's a big sign. There's a there's a branch of of this restaurant and the airport. They have a new airport in it's Indianapolis. Using you in their ads. Yeah, yeah, they're using me in their ads. Will, will everyone who's going to Indianapolis International Airport check for Allison's sign, please? Yes, please, and send me a picture. <laughs> I'd love and to see it. And send her a picture. How much yeah. time do we have in this segment? Uh, may I ask? Oh, two minutes. Thank you. Uh, more to your your tasting, your world tastings. I know chocolate is one of your favorites. It sure is. After what could heat? be wrong with You've chocolate? heard of combining heat and I chocolate, sure have. right? And bacon and chocolate. Well, they're combining everything. And then if with you chocolate, put, you know, a little bad. hot pepper in with that, that's really? what I'm talking about. Yeah. Bacon, yeah. chocolate. Now, chocolate, yeah. you don't just put it in your mouth and eat it, do you? Well, okay. Now, if you're How going to go have a delicious praline or um, a truffle, you can just go ahead and pop it in, I say. Um, but if you're going to, you know, fine chocolate tasting, when you're just tasting the pure chocolate, you're supposed to break a little piece off, mm. pop it in, not chew, allow it to dissolve. No teeth, okay. Because, you know, you're trying to get the feel of the fat and all of the other stuff stuff coating yeah. your mouth and really get the full-on experience. Then and what do then you do it, after that? Then you can swallow. <sighs> On that note, <laughs> I'm going to have a chocolate. We're going to be right back with you. That was uh, quite a session there. <laughs> and then you can swallow, she said. <laughs>